Yeah. Hi, Yuzuke. Hi, everybody. Thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, sorry for not being able to. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, sorry for not being able to, to talk to you from face to face, but I was kept or I'm kept here due to important internal issues. Um, is my presentation on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I slightly modified the title of the presentation, and today I'm going to talk about the current development of a global water quality indicator in support of the sustainable development goals and about the uh, monitoring requirements that relate to the development and the calculation of such a uh, water quality indicator. Could you go to the next slide? Okay, we Introduction. Talk. Okay, introduction. Yeah. Okay. Um, I assume that you already talked about the sustainable development goals and the uh, uh, goal six on water, so I don't go into okay, too much depth it. here. But um, at the moment, we have the proposal for that uh, goal number six with sub, sub, six sub targets, one of them being target six covering uh, water quality and the improvement of water quality by reducing pollution. In that context, um, based on the experiences from this uh, Millennium Development Goals, a, a number of UN agencies have formed a initiative aiming at uh, integrating monitoring of water and sanitation related SDG targets back in 2013, uh, realizing that the water sector at the moment does not have a integrated and uh, um, coherent monitoring framework uh, to support the member states and the international community in measuring progress towards the SDGs on sustainable water and sanitation. Back in 2013, uh, um, and supported by the Swiss Development Corporation, a number of uh, UN Water members, namely UN uh, Habitat, UNEP, and WHO, formed that initiative. And um, could, could you go to the next slide? Yeah, I'm here. And initiated a uh, process to prepare the development of a co coherent water monitoring framework. In the first phase last year, expert task, task teams were formed to develop or, a, a, and assess uh, existing indicators and develop uh, appropriate indicators for each of the six SCG Gold 6 targets. And the, I don't want to go too much into detail here. Um, the result in terms of water quality uh, of that task team was to base the future development of the water quality indicator for ambient water quality on an existing indicator that has been developed through the GEMS water program in the past. As a result, UN Water proposed two uh, core indicators as a result of the task team uh, and uh, uh, collaboration process in 2014, UN Water uh, proposed two core indicators for water quality in general, one covering uh, wastewater, and that is the percentage of wastewater uh, safely treated, and the one relevant to our talk today, to my talk, is uh, the second core indicator. This is the percentage of receiving water bodies with ambient water quality not presenting risk to environment or human health. Could you go to the next slide, please? Okay. So be before I further dive into the development of the water quality indicator, or what has been developed to, uh, up to today, I'll first give you a short introduction about the uh, GEMS water program and the related data. So on that slide, you see an, uh, this, the current structure of the GEMS water program, which has been major, uh, has gone through a major transition process recently. The program was run and operated by the uh, government of Canada for uh, more than 30 years, since 1978 until last year. And now the entire program is restructured uh, with three main components, one be, uh, under the uh, central governance of, of the Uni uh, United Nations Environmental Program, and two global centers, one covering uh, capacity development that is currently being established in, in Ireland, and the other one being the GEMS Water Data Center that has been established at the Federal Institute of Hydrology last year and that I'm coordinating. 
and we here focus on the data collection of water quality monitoring uh, data from national monitoring networks and also research monitoring networks. That entire uh, global uh, structure is then supported by, on the one hand, uh, partners in the countries that operate national uh, water quality monitoring networks, regional offices of uh, UNEP and other UN agencies, and regional hubs. And these regional hubs, uh, by the way, uh, Marcelo, who is uh, guiding the session, is, is uh, head of the first regional hub that we established in Brazil. And these regional hubs are supposed to support the program in terms of uh, outreach, capacity development, and communication within the regions. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. James, James Water, um, and specifically our center here in, in Koblenz, continues to maintain the, and extend the largest global water quality database and information system, which is called GEMSTAP. And uh, on the picture, you see the global distribution of um, uh, monitoring stations by station type in terms of the water body being monitored. And currently, the GEMS Water uh, Data Repository uh, covers uh, rivers, lakes, reservoirs, groundwater, and uh, wetlands with more than 4,100 stations in more than 130 countries worldwide, uh, comprising about 4.8 million sampling values for more than 250 water quality parameters covering a range of from 1965 to 2014. Next slide, please. Okay. So now I'll dive a little bit into the development of the, the water quality indicator. The basis for the indicator, uh, for the development of the upcoming SCG ambient water quality indicator is uh, the GEMS Water Global Water Quality Indicator that has been developed in support of the uh, environmental performance index that was um, established in 2008. The aim of that water quality index is to assess the overall quality of inland surface water resources relating to aquatic ecosystem health. And the index itself is a so-called proximity to target index that compares measured values at the station level in the first place with, uh, of, of certain water quality parameters with a benchmark or a guideline value. Next slide, please. The index is calculated as follows. So in the first step, the data is pre-processed and erroneous records uh, such as non-detect and so on are removed uh, to ensure it certain data quality. And the second step, yearly averages for each station and each selected parameter are calculated from the pre-processed data. And then in a second step, for all those stations that have at least three measurements per year per parameter, the five-year averages are being calculated. So there's a, a temporal averaging process being, uh, 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 um, in the second step. It is important to note here that the five last yearly averages are used for that um, uh, five-year averages. In the first step, the so-called uh, proximity to target uh, scores are being calculated. And the score is, um, as, is, is being calculated as the difference between the five-year average for each uh, uh, um, water quality parameter and the defined target, divided by the range between the minimum or maximum of the measured parameter concentration and the target. For those uh, stations um, where required data is sometimes not available, um, uh, empiric, um, uh, empiric poly polynomial regressions have been established, for example, to calculate total phosphorus and total nitrogen. Uh, in a next step, the um, proximity to target scores are uh, scaled to a range between 0 and uh, 100, where 100 indicates that the target for each parameter is met. And the further uh, you go away from 100, the, the, low, uh, uh, the, the larger is the discrepancy towards the target. Uh, it is the lower the quality of the water. 
in the fourth step, then these uh, station level proximity to target values are uh, averaged um, uh, at, at per station uh, to finally calculate the uh, uh, global water, water quality indicator at station level. And in the last step, the indicator is calculated at the country, country level by uh, arithmetically averaging over the station level indicators. Um, in order to, or assuming that, that a denser monitoring network offers a more detailed and robust information about the water quality in a country, the country level water quality index is, is finally being adjusted for the density of the monitoring network. Uh, referred to the populated area in a country. So the indicator, the final resulting indicator, might be reduced up to 80% of the original value. Next slide, please. Okay. So for the selection of the uh, relevant guideline to uh, determine the targets for the indicator calculation and the parameter selection, um, for the guideline selection, the, uh, due to a lack of, of relevant um, ambient water quality guidelines, ecosystem guidelines, the WHO drinking water guidelines have been used as target values for the selected parameters. And due to limited uh, data coverage, um, five main water quality parameters have been selected to cover a broad range of uh, relevant water quality impairment such as uh, oxygen depletion, nutrient pollution, acidification, and salinization. And these parameters, as you can see in the left column of the table, are dissolved oxygen, pH, electrical conductivity, total nitrogen, and total phosphorus. And in the second column, you see the target values for, uh, uh, taken from the WHO guidelines with respect to these parameters. And the remaining columns uh, denote the upper uh, and lower bounds and the score range uh, between these bounds. Next slide, please. So, so far we are currently working on assessing the feasibility of that index with respect to uh, a use for the sustainable development goal uh, um, reporting and uh, monitoring and reporting. And what you see here on that map is a, a preliminary assessment of the data available in GEMSTAT at the moment to that is necessary to calculate the, the uh, global water quality index. And um, here you see that actually only 19 countries, the ones marked in blue, have uh, recent data available so that you can actually calculate a contemporary global water quality index. So there's a large uh, uh, gap in, in the required uh, water quality monitoring data availability at the moment. Um, this situation can be improved. Um, currently, we are migrating the entire system. So uh, we, in, for the next couple of months, plan to import a lot more information from those countries that make their data available freely and online. But for many countries, um, especially in Africa, and Central Asia, uh, we either lack the contacts to national water quality monitoring networks, um, or they do not report for any reasons, or there is no, none at all. So um, that situation remains to be uh, problematic in many parts. Um, next slide, please. Apart from the data availability issues, there are also some methodological issues um, with respect to the usability uh, within the SDG context. One is the spatial scope. So the current indicator, uh, the proposed indicator, only covers surface waters, um, which is uh, problematic in semi-arid and arid areas where groundwater is the most res uh, important water resource. Um, a second issue is uh, the temporal scope. Currently, the indicator uses per country different time ranges just based on the data availability. So there is a lack of comparability of the calculated targets uh, among the countries, uh, which is problematic as well. Another issue is the thematic scope. So the developed indicator only focuses on aquatic ecosystem health and does not include the required uh, human health aspects. 
um, as stated in the proposed indicator. So um, the inclusion of health relevant water quality impairments uh, will be necessary. Another issue at the moment is, is the choice of guidelines. We, for the time being, use the WHO drinking water guidelines, but are looking actually at source waters. Um, and at the moment, there's just a lack of existing uh, uh, water quality guidelines for aquatic ecosystems. Furthermore, in order to assess actually the percentage of receiving water, water bodies not to uh, pose a risk to human health and aquatic ecosystems, we need additional, in, um, um, uh, we, we lack actually uh, hydrographic metadata with regards to rivers and lakes uh, at the moment. So this brings me to my conclusions. Next slide, please. Oh, this uh, is the end. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I, I find this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it should be the conclusion. Yeah, I find it. Yeah, okay. Sorry. okay. So um, basically, we need to dramatically improve the data coverage, both temporally and spatially. And we will focus our data acquisition um, to the finally selected parameters in the near future. And we hope that by uh, participating in the JAMI process, we can increase the uh, data availability uh, through an increased data reporting from the countries worldwide. Um, it remains to be seen to which extent we can actually extend the or include also groundwater bodies uh, in that index. This is something we haven't really started yet working on. Um, another requirement coming from the international community is the inclusion of the human health relevant parameters, for example, fecal coliform bacteria. And there's a urgent need um, when covering aquatic ecosystems for um, relevant aquatic ecosystem guidelines that take into account the best attainable conditions in a, in a water body because at the moment um, every water body is, is, is um, handled uh, to be the same and the um, physiogeographic phys conditions uh, around these water bodies in the catchments are not really taken into account. At the moment some international water quality guidelines for ecosystems are being developed that pro will provide a methodology to attain such uh, guideline values in the future and we hope to be able to reuse these ones for the uh, de further development of the index. And finally, we need to have consistent hydrographic metadata at the global scale um, to assess actually the percentage of the receiving water bodies uh, with respect to ambient water quality, not presenting risk to the environment or human health. Okay, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much. So, the, okay. so, thank you. thank you, Philip. Uh, well, I guess we have uh, time for just one question. Yeah. You have a question. He's asking, do you have a turbidity data? Is it in the gems one? If we have what? Turbidity, turbidity data. Turbidity, yeah. yeah turbidity is, is available. Um, and, uh, but the, the uh, coverage, the spatial and temporal coverage is, is not really um, um, uh, um, enough to have a broad focus, of, cover a broad range of countries at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, I want to ask you. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what are the indicators to be used to measure the Hard 6.3 under the Jamie uh, initiative? Did you hear? Uh, it was something with Jimmy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you asking Could country? What, what, are, what are the targets? What are the indicators mm -hmm. to be used to measure target six point three under Jimmy? Yeah, the indicator. So he's asking for the indicator. What kind of indicator are you asking for the Jimmy? And uh, what kind of target country? Can you explain uh, about the Jimmy? 
the Jemmy. Uh, so um, for the second half of the year, Jemmy is um, uh, preparing a uh, proof of concept in pilot countries. And at the moment, seven pilot countries, I'm not, didn't really understand to the, the answer well, but at the moment seven pilot countries um, shall uh, uh, participate in that in the proof of concept phase and we will test actually the implementation and uh, um, uh, calculation of or uh, development further development of the indicators in these countries first and then in a second phase in 2016 and 17 we'll try to uh, cover as many countries as, as possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, Philip, the question is yeah. the questions about the guidelines and the indicators uh, for the JME. Which guidelines? JME guidelines. Uh, the guidelines that JME is using to develop indicators of water quality. Uh, which is the reference? Um, well, that, that's still uh, open for discussion. Actually, for water quality at the moment, we are looking at the ones I just presented. So at the moment, it's the WHO guidelines. And as soon as the international water quality guidelines for ecosystems are finished, we will also have a look at these ones. And for the next couple of weeks, we will actually try to come up with a, the, the, to, to compile the monitoring methodology. So we will have a very intensive write up phase in the next uh, upcoming eight weeks. And uh, once that is done, you can actually uh, have a better insight in, because at the moment, I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Okay. I, okay. I, Thank you, Philip. I need to run. Okay. Me too. Thank you. 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 Thank